What you doing? What you doing, Daisy? Huh? What you doing? Hmm? What you doing? What you doing, girl? You good, girl? Okay. All right. You ain't gentle. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Jason West. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just got done fishing a tournament last weekend. Actually, I haven't been able to make it out this weekend just because the weather's been a little iffy. Uh, wife's not feeling great and we have a new puppy, so fun times. But yeah, it's been, it's been a long, long week. So, made it out to Lanier last weekend and was really, really stoked for this, this tournament. I hadn't fished Lanier in several years and I kind of already knew where I wanted to go. So I didn't really, I didn't get a chance to pre-fish either because we were picking up a puppy um, the week before. So, didn't really have a chance to get out to Lanier. Um, hindsight, one of the many mistakes that I made going out there and, and fishing this tournament was not pre-fishing so this is the first tournament I've fished in four or five years now so it, I had to sh shake off some of the rust um, but regardless mistakes were made um, pre-fishing being one of them I, I got out to the tournament and on the way there I uh, sorry there's pollen going like crazy but I uh, on the way there had some issues with the kayak and wound up having to basically like disassemble the entire seat. Um, and I was like, man, I just really hope the seat holds together for the tournament, which it did. It was fine. It held together. But when I got to the, the boat ramp, I had to go and put all my, my seat back together, bolt it down, uh, and just kind of makeshift patch, patch it together to make sure it would work. Um, but I got that, got that figured out. And then after that, uh, you know, when I went to pay for the, uh, the parking at the the boat ramp and the machine was off which I didn't know in like Lake Alatoona uh, where I normally fish they have if the if the meters are off that just means it's free but I've where I went bef where I went for this linear tournament I've actually gotten tickets uh, at that parking ramp I mean this is years ago but um, I got a ticket for parking in a, in a trailer spot without a trailer um, this was back when I was beginning to kayak so I didn't really know and it was warning but lesson learned never did that again don't do that if you're watching and you think that's a good idea but long story short is a, so that was on my mind I'm like man I know DNR is coming over here I know they're looking so please don't give me a ticket so that's in the back of my mind already as well so I got the seat thing I got to worry about now I've got the, the parking thing that I, I got to worry about not getting a ticket I back my my trailer down get the kayak all in the water and uh and everything seems pretty good, um, you know, and I'm, the parking thing threw me off. And I was like, well, I guess I don't need to go to my truck because I don't need to put anything in my truck to for the uh, parking slip. So I uh, hop in the kayak and I'm like, all right, it's I can be on the water now. So I start, you know, leaving with all the, uh, there's about five or six other kayakers in this one, one area. And every one of them had motors except for me. I had, I had the pedal drive, which is great, but did not have a motor. So, um, and... Again, I hadn't fished this spot in probably, f I want to say five or six years. I love this spot, and I feel like I knew it like the back of my hand. Um, I'll get to that here in a minute, but I, uh, so, long story short, I take off. I'm about 30 feet from the bank, and I'm like, I feel like I'm missing something. And uh, I get on Tourney X, and I check in, and I look on Tiny Tourney X, and it's got the, you know, you can enter your fish, whatever, it's got, and it's got identifier. And I look at the identifier, and I'm like, crap I forgot to grab my identifier from the truck so I have to turn my kayak around I'm on the water go back to the shore pull my kayak up run to my boat or run to my truck put the, the identifier on my hand grab it I grabbed another card and wrote the identifier on that as well just to have a backup then I have to run back down and uh, hop in my kayak so this time I'm already all the other kayaks are gone they're gone they're, are, they're already out of the picture they got motors they're, they're just they're gone uh, I saw one dude drive out into the middle of the lake on Lake Lanier, which is insane. Uh, I don't know if I would do that even if I had a motor, but that dude was out there, middle of the channel, like just going for it. So more power to him. But 
So I'm, I'm working this bank that I had planned the entire time. I finally get to the bank, and I'm just trying to trying to not get spun out. You know, that's a big thing in fishing. You get spun out, and and it's hard to recover from it, especially if you're fishing a tournament. You can get really great. Now this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. I know it's just going to be a bad day. So you got to keep keep positivity um, going. So I'm like, all right. All that's behind me. I'm good. I'm on the water. I can focus on fishing now. So I'm working this bank. Um, get snagged in a tree. Wind up breaking off a lure. And I'm like, all right, not gonna let it get to me. So keep moving and uh, get this. You know, I kind of figure out this pattern and um, throw this jerk bait. And I'm twitching it, whatever. And this fish just slams it. Just slams it. I mean, slams it. This is Lake Lanier. It's I feel like it's one of the biggest spotted bass lakes of the in the nation. Um, so, I mean, just slams it, and I mean, it comes up and the fish jumps, and I'm like, oh my, oh my God, it's it's the biggest spot I've probably ever caught in my life. And I know it's cliche to say that, like, oh, it's the biggest fish, it's the biggest fish ever. Um, but I really, I mean, it jumped. All I saw was belly and just the stripe going down it, and it, I'm like, oh my God. So it gets close to the boat, and it's just rip and drag. And those mega basses, I know I've talked to about them, and I'm probably you guys are probably sick of hearing about it. But the problem is they've got those number eight hooks, so I can't keep super pressure on them. You gotta let those fish just kind of play out. And I'm torn between letting the fish play out and keeping pressure on it to make sure it doesn't f come unbuttoned. Well, long story short, it gets right to the side of the kayak, jumps again. Um, in the video, I don't think you can see it the second time it jumped, which I wish you could because that would have been a really good shot of of what the actual fish size was but it jumps and right as it jumped I'm thinking do I need to try and grab it and pull it in the kayak or do I need to grab the net and try and net it and the problem with the net is that if if I net it again I've got three treble hooks number eights and if I net that fish I'm gonna spend 30 minutes trying to unhook all those hooks from the net I learned that from experience a couple weeks ago as well so it's like, man, I, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And in that time, I hesitated, which another lesson learned. I shouldn't have hesitated. I should just grab the net. And um, I gave it time to jump. And then the line just went slack. Blink. Gone. There's one. This is a big one. Don't come off. Don't come off. Don't. Oh. No. And that was probably the biggest spotted bass of my life. And I, I know, like I said, everyone says, oh, you know, I lost the biggest fish of my life. I lost the biggest fish of my life. And they say that every time they go out, right? It's, it's stereotypical fisherman stuff, but I'm telling you that fish probably would have went four pounds, three and a half, four pounds, spotted bass. That would have been my biggest spotted bass ever. I think the biggest one I've caught up to now would probably be about three, but regardless. So again, that comes off right at the kayak and I'm super bummed out and I'm like, and I feel like that would have made the day of, all right, this is the, this is the track I'm on. This is the track I'm on. When that fish came off, I felt like, all right, I can go on the good track or I can go on the bad track. And, and when it came off, I'm just like, I feel like I'm on this path and I got to get back onto the positive track. So I, um, get back out there and I'm just like, all right, I'm going to stick to the pattern. I'm going to stick to what I'm doing. And you know, it's just a fluke. So I, I find another bank with a bunch of riprap and rock. So my pattern was jerk baits on the riprap and rock in the early morning. So I, I found a couple spots and since it's been five or six years, a lot of that riprap have been added since then. So I, I hadn't, I had no idea that a lot of those areas were there. Um, they had been added since the last time I fished there. So I, uh, I found a couple spots real close and I 
jerk bait and um, the next spot, rip wrap, throw on the jerk bait. Sure enough, bam, get a hit, solid spotted bass. This time I'm super, 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 super careful. Let it play out, I bring it up, I look at it, it's, it's good hooked, all right, I lip it, pull it in, and um, like a moron, I, uh, I'm like, well, I'm gonna let it, let the energy kind of die out on this guy first before I put it on the, the board. So I take a selfie with it, you know, I'm proud of it. Oh, look, look, I got this really nice spot of bass, you know? All right, I'm like, I'm gonna be on the board and I've still got all day long. I figured out this pattern, I'm good. And uh, so I take out the, the measuring board and the first time I've ever entered a fish in, um, in Turny X. So I was like, all right, this is gonna be the first time I get to enter a fish in Turny X. It's a good sized fish, it's a spot, it's a nice spot. Uh, you know, it's still so super early in the day. I'm gonna try and put that big fish behind me that I lost. All right, we're, we're gonna get back on the good path. We're just, we're gonna keep trying to get on this good path, right? So, um, so I, I take a selfie with the fish. I'm like, all right, it's not flopping around or anything. I'm holding it out for the GoPro. This on my chest, I'm like, look at this fish. And I put it on the measuring board. And as soon as that thing hits the measuring board, bing, gone. Jumps off the measuring board into the water. There's one. I don't know if you'll go 12, but we'll see. We'll go 12. <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Don't. Can you not? Ooh, mama. Okay. There's one. This is a nice spot, too. Take the timer off. Okay, let's do this. Now I've made every rookie mistake in the book. Could not take a picture, nothing. It was gone. It was on the measuring board for 0.5 seconds. And uh, it's just, so again, I'm like, I think we're gonna get on this path. Nope, now we're back on the, you know, we're, we're getting back on the good path. Nope, now we're, we're back on this, this like trying to go negative, you know, so I'm just super, frustrated at this point you know that's basically two fish I've lost you know even though I've got a killer selfie with the second one right um, and people at the, the boat ramp were laughing at me later on that day because I was like yeah I came off on the bump board but I had a really great selfie of it um, so that kind of set the pace for the whole day after that I just kept trying and trying and trying um, I, I found one more spot with riprap, but I, I couldn't find it in many spots. And the other problem is that there's there'd been a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy rain, and secondary points and stuff that that I knew I'd planned on going to, they were gone. They were just literally underwater, um, and the bass just were not on. They just weren't on those secondary points that are submerged, because um, the secondary points uh, and the main points, they were underwater. So I mean, there was literally a cove. There was not a cove. It was literally just two coves turned into one cove. And um, so that was really, and the, the water was chocolate milk, had a lot of debris in it. And um, this is where it gets kind of interesting because by this time it's 
I've got maybe two, three hours left of fishing, and I'm like, all right, the water temp's warmed up. The fish probably are not holding on those rocks anymore. So I missed that bite. That was a morning bite with the jerk bait on the rocks. And I, you know, it's just, I, I know from that point on, it's just gonna be a grind if I can even get a fish. So I'm switching tactics to like Ned rigs and, um, you know, kind of just throwing some real finessey stuff to just try and just to try and get a bite to see if I can pick a fish off, at least get something entered in um, in a turn AX, right? So I can at least get a fish in the tournament. And um, it just wasn't meant to be. I was, I was hitting all kinds of areas, uh, laydowns, trees, um, cover, just you name it. I, I just couldn't get a bite. And then towards the end of the day, uh, this comes, comes back to where the pre fishing was. is I get to this area on the other side of, of where I was fishing, you know, and wasn't super far from where I was fishing in the morning time, but I get to I get to this this area and it kind of turns in and it's rip rap and rock, right? Man, I was thinking the whole morning, man, if I could just find a really long bank, like just a couple hundred yards of just rip rap and rock, I could probably get a limit. I could probably get five decent fish. Uh, long story short, I'm coming back and I'm just I'm beat up at this point at, towards the end of the day, and I come around this this bend and I thought this it was a 30 yard stretch of riprap and it goes around into this cove and it's just about 100 yards of just solid just rock and riprap and I'm like I mean it was perfect perfect for what I was looking for and I. If I had known that in the morning, I would have gone right there after I hit the other two spots, and I probably would have been able to pull the limit, but I didn't know it was there. I should have pre-fished. I shouldn't have just assumed everything would be the same as it was five years ago. Um, obviously, that was my mistake, and uh, when I say it out loud, you're like, oh yeah, of course, it's been five years. Of course, things are going to change, dummy, you know? But um, but that's that's what happened, so lesson learned, you know? Um, going to definitely pre-fish the next tournament. Um, I also think that not having a motor was a major disadvantage because those guys were covering miles and miles and miles of water and I was covering maybe a mile, maybe a mile of water. You know, I, I don't know if that's even accurate. I mean, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't as far and I wasn't covering as much as, as what those guys were. That's for sure. So I, um, I've got, got some stuff coming hopefully I can remedy that in the next tournament and I'll be able to cover more water but uh, yeah not being able to cover water not be able to find the right spots to fit the pattern that I had found and uh, and just poor execution you know just um, uh, just not prepared I should have been thinking mentally all right this I'm gonna get a big fish and I need to be prepared for it instead of uh, man I can't believe my seats doing this I hope I don't get a ticket I hope I'm not doing this I hope I'm not doing that twitching the rod and then all of a sudden the fish hammers it and I'm not ready for it I'm like oh my god I'm, I'm completely surprised by it right and then and then I'm not ready for um, you know steps two and three which is I gotta get it to the boat I gotta play it out do I put pressure on it do I let it play itself out when I get to the boat do I net it do I do I grab it by the hand or do I just try and grab it pull it in you know stuff like that I should have figured out immediately um, in that tournament not not been questioning it as soon as it happened it, when it happened I should have had a plan for it and I didn't I was too wrapped up in the details and everything that had been happening earlier on in the day so I got I got spun out um, lesson learned on that you know first tournament in five years six years I was really bummed because Lanier has always been really near and dear to my heart uh, I won that I won a tournament on Lanier in 2010 2011 for Georgia kayak fishing um, and ever since then, I've just felt like a special connection to that lake. But when I got there um, last week, I, that connection just was not there. I just, it just something felt super off. Um, and it was like that obviously all day long. So didn't enter, enter any fish. I uh, tied for 37th with everybody else who didn't catch a fish. Um, but I, I've, like I said, I've learned a lot. I'll adapt, I'll, uh, I'll overcome, and I will do better on the next tournament. I'll, I'll execute better. I'm not going to get try not to get spun out, try not to have any issues and, and just be prepared. So I know those tournaments get even bigger than that. So, um, you know, the next one could have 60, 70 people in it, which is crazy. I've never fished a tournament with 60, 70 people in it. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to testing myself and seeing if I can't get back on track and execute and just see where kind of I land um, when I do have a good day of fishing in a tournament and uh, I catch a limit and 
uh, get on a good pattern and I can I can hold that pattern all day and and you know and, and catch some of these fish and and do what I think that I, I'm capable of doing so um, I'm looking forward to that and um, it's not really about whether I win or lose it's just about proving to myself like hey I got out there I caught the five best fish I could I had a solid day I have no excuses and here's what I have here are my cards they're on the table uh, if I win I win if I lose I lose I don't care it's just about going out and proving to myself that like all right I'm gonna do I'm gonna get my best five fish and that's it and I'm gonna do it clean without any issues and without um, any any execution problems so that's my goal um, and after that you can't really be mad at yourself you know what I mean that, that's at a certain point you know somebody just got five bigger fish than you um, but that's that's my goal but anyway I hope you guys are having a, uh, a good time hope you guys have a good Easter um, I'm sure this will be out probably on Easter day if not a day or two after that but I uh, hope you guys have a good Easter. Uh, get out on the water, catch some fish, go have some fun. Like and subscribe to this video if you have any comments, any suggestions, any other videos you want to see um, as far as tips, reviews. Um, you know, hey, videotape yourself in a different area. Videotape yourself with more fishing gear behind you. Do whatever, you know, stuff like that. Let me know because it's, it's all helpful. And uh, I want to make something that you guys will appreciate and enjoy and be entertained by so but that's about it that's all i've got to say uh, you know mistakes are made um but i've i realized the mistakes i made and in the future we will correct those so that's uh that's it and i will talk to you later thanks for watching please like and please subscribe thanks guys